it's Rida. Welcome to another interview brought by the Enterprise World. Today, we have Avik Pal, the CEO of CliniOps. CliniOps is technology and data science company for the life science industry, supporting decentralized clinical trials, making drug trials accessible, inclusive, faster, and cheaper. The company is being featured as the cover story of the Enterprise World's edition, the most promising healthcare tech solution providers in 2022. Now, let's welcome Avik and gain his views and insights about ClinicOps and the healthcare industry. Welcome, Avik. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Okay. My first question. Can you please tell us about ClinicOps and what led to its foundation? Well, um, let me let me take a step back. You know, I come from a technology background, um, so I'm just an engineer. <laughs> And so with no background in medicine, so I'm kind of an outsider looking in. Um, I graduated from IIT, it's a premier technology institute uh, back in India, and I come with a data and data science background, right? Um, so I got introduced to the space and to my wife, who's a physician, but she moved into clinical research. And uh, the more I read about the space, it was clear to me that there's a lot of data play, right? Um, especially for large global clinical trials where you're collecting data from you know, all around the world. Data plays a big role. And unfortunately, you know, it was not given that importance in the, in the way trials were run in the past. Um, so, and to get a better understanding, I actually participated in a few of the trials as a healthy volunteer. <laughs> and uh, to my utter dismay, I, I kind of realized that even in heart of Silicon Valley, so I live in San Francisco, California, yeah. um, trials were conducted in a very manual and paper-based way. Right? So I was yeah. given like a piece of paper, the informed consent, we did and sign it, post those kind of things, right? And once you do it that way, you have to kind of stack those, you know, papers in binders, folders, and cupboards. And I was looking at that, uh, you know, seventh floor of the hospital, and there were like you know, 20 cupboards. And I was thinking in my mind, hey, you know, real estate is so costly in San Francisco. And uh, we're stacking these, uh, you know, cupboards, and they're going to stay there for, you know, decades, right? And why not do it in a better way? where you can free this up and actually have beds for patients. Right? Mm -hmm. So that was kind of, you know, um, the thought and the motivation behind, you know, starting ClinicOps to, you know, kind of create the next generation clinical trial technology to run, make this whole process, you know, run smoother. Now, along the way, I was joined by with my co-founder Subhu and later Partha. You know, each of us uh, bring different perspectives to make the entire process more, you know, uh, seamless and collaborative, you know, different ideas, right? So how to, you know, uh, collectively make this uh, much better. And, you know, today we work with um, several of the top 10 uh, institutions, um, academic, um, research, um, pharma, biotech, medical device, foundations, global health foundations, and, and of course, CROs, the clinical research organizations. Mm -hmm. All right. So that led me to my second question then. What do you think are the major challenges faced by the healthcare the healthcare industry, and how does ClinicOps tackle those? Yeah, I mean, uh, there are some bigger challenges and like, you know, it takes like, you know, almost a $3 billion to take a, a, take a drug to market. And that's like yeah. exorbitantly high, right? It also takes more than decades, more than a decade uh, to bring a new drug to market. But, you know, coming, coming to, the, uh, to, the, to, the, to the focus area where we kind of operate, you know, we see a few challenges like, you know, trial design, right? uh, trial platform, trial execution and uh, outcome, right? So on the design side, you know, that it's, it's heavily focused on the sponsors and um, the, the there's a lot of burden on the sites, like site burden, patient burden, you know, physician burden, all that stuff. All of this uh, leads to kind of inefficiencies in the process, right? So our thought was how can we make it more inclusive and reduce the burden on the sites and you know, physicians and all the uh, da, da, da. In the process, sponsors benefit. You know, if patients are engaged, patients stay in the study, they don't drop out or, you know, da, 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 then at the end of the day, you know, sponsors benefit, right? You know, um, so in, in many ways, like cost, um, you know, timeline, efficiency, quality of data, all of that, right? And when you come to the platform, you know, over the years, um, platforms are kind of evolved in silos, right? It's uh, disjoint and disconnected. To run one clinical trial, you'll probably need, you know, five, seven different databases, which is highly inefficient, right? So that's uh, another area that we focus on as a unified platform approach. Um, on the execution side, uh, I think a lot of the things happen outside 
um, of the of the technology platform, right? You know, in terms of mm -hmm. workflows, you know, signatures, approvals, this and that, and and all of those in this particular uh, industry, they are called source data, um, which is a very regulated industry. So maintaining all of those outside the system becomes very difficult and very costly, right? So how can you make a more um, seamless execution, right? Uh, workflow driven, and you know, where everybody is, uh, you know, less friction between sites, patients, sponsors, um, uh, CROs, or basically all stakeholders right mm -hmm. and um, you know all of these results uh, in that uh, lack of data insights and transparency which is basically the outcome so how can we make this whole outcome more um, you know uh, comfortable easy and smooth let's uh, smooth for all okay all right and my next question uh, what does clean ops offer and how are they a class apart okay yeah so we offer a technology platform um, uh, unified technology platform, if I may, uh, to support mm -hmm. the clinical trial in a more seamless, efficient, and uh, you know, effective way. Um, one of the things that we do in a post uh, or pre-COVID trials were all conducted mostly at the hospital, which is called the traditional yeah. way of doing things. And post-COVID, they're all done uh, with, uh, I mean, most of the trials are done with many um, you know, components which are decentralized, which is data collection from home, right? Our platform actually enables um, seamless um, you know, visits either from home or from hospital, like televisit, site visit, home visit, lab visit, very seamlessly. So that's the unified pl platform approach. And um, we have multiple patents on it. And that's one of the big differentiators uh, that we have. And, um, you know, obviously, uh, in the process, when you're collecting all these data uh, at source in a very high quality, you can elevate what is traditionally called as the clinical data management to a whole new level, right? We call it clinical data mm -hmm. science, like bringing, bringing real-time analytics, um, you know, real-time decision support system, um, and uh, because we have, you know, good data or great, uh, very high quality data to begin with. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And what do you think is the, because you mentioned uh, there's a difference pre-pandemic uh, and now we are, I guess, still in the pandemic recovering. What do you think is the future for the healthcare industry, especially after COVID-19? And where will clinic ops position be in that future? Yeah, interesting. So we'll see you know, how this uh, all unfolds. Uh, but one thing I have to say that, you know, among all the bad things that COVID did to the world, um, it at least did one thing that uh, we should all recognize. It did um, bring the acceptance of technology uh, in a very, very regulated space like healthcare yeah. and life sciences, right? And that acceptance is not uh, a temporary thing. I, I think we have crossed a one-way door, so there's no going back. And trials will not be done the traditional way as it has been done for more than 25 years. Uh, since the first EDCs came to the market. Going forward, I think majority of the trials will be done in a hybrid model where uh, a good amount of thought process will be put in in designing the protocols as to how much of those visits can be done from home, patient home, without you know, basically taking the trials to where your patients are, without putting too much of a burden on the, on the patient that you know, for a five minute follow up visit, they typically would travel for you know, two hours, sit there for two hours and do that five minute visit, come back for two hours. It's like almost a whole day gone, right? But through telemedicine and remote, uh, you know, data and all that uh, stuff, we can, they can just spare five minutes and get done with it, right? So, so that, um, that um, you know, that patient centricity and making, you know, uh, the comfort of the patient from doing things from the comfort of their home and all that stuff. I think those are the things that uh, will be big, uh, you know, going forward. Um, and again, as I said before, I mean, all that also leads to good data quality, right? At source, you start with a very good data quality instead of all the you know, papers and binders and folders and cupboards. Mm -hmm. Those will eventually phase out and we'll have very good data um, right from uh, right at the source. And that uh, will take that whole you know, data science to a whole new level. I mean, all the other industries that you look, right? Uh, starting with, you know, uh, telecom industry, you know, high tech industry, um, airline industry, hotel industry, um, the consumer industry and you know, Amazonization or whatever you want to call it, when I mean, each one of them has taken data science to a whole new level. Mm -hmm. one, one that is lacking is healthcare and life sciences. And I think mm -hmm. this is our time to take it to a whole new level. Yeah, well, that sounds really, really interesting. And um, can you please share with us your take on the competition in the industry and how do you handle it personally and professionally? <laughs> I think uh, I think competition is always good. In fact, it's great, right? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, unless uh, unless there's competition, competition you 
you don't get to push your limits, right? So, um, um, so because of the competition, I mean, I think uh, different companies have uh, innovated themselves and you know come up with newer things and uh, all that stuff. So, it's very healthy, and uh, I think it's uh, it's very good for the industry. And um, mm -hmm. I personally handle competition. Um, in the right spirit, uh, it mm -hmm. kind of uh, motivates. Uh, if I see somebody else doing uh, something good, and it's it's it's, it's fantastic. It's uh, it's mm -hmm. great, and um, and that also charges you know you to kind of take yourself to the to a whole new level, right? Yeah. Instead of uh, instead of um, riding the wave, uh, can you lead the wave? Can you can you get, mm -hmm. stay ahead of the pack, right? So, I think um, you know competition is always good. <laughs> it motivates you to be a better person of yourself. Yeah, and we see this all the time in every other space. I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of sports. I mean, um, so, you know, unless you have a good, uh, you know, opponent on the other side, you know, the level of the Federer and Nadal. <laughs> so each, yes. you know, kind of helps the, the other to kind of take themselves to a whole new level. So, yeah. Okay, that's great. That's awesome. Now, this is my um, last question to you. Do you have um, any messages that, would, that you would like to share with uh, budding entrepreneurs? Uh, well, there are many successful entrepreneurs out there. I'm, I'm, I'm just a student in this journey. Um, but uh, one thing I can say that, you know, definitely, you know, follow your dreams. I mean, if you have an idea, take some actions, uh, mm -hmm. you will not repent, uh, you know, um, and uh, ideas a dime a dozen, you know, it's the execution that matters. So make it actionable, take some, you know, one step will lead to the other, will lead to the other, will lead to the other, but not doing and just, um, you know, thinking with uh, all these ideas will not take you anywhere. So, so yeah, you know, be actionable, um, dream big, but uh, take actions. Be actionable, dream big and take action. That is great advice. So is there anything that you would like to add to this, to this interview? Um, well, um, I think, um, uh, you know, when we first started, uh, we've worked with um, you know quite a few different types of um, institutions, um, starting with very high-end hospitals and you know tier one hospitals in the U.S., uh, uh, and also with very you know remote health centers in sub-Saharan Africa, right mm -hmm. per se, and the challenges are very very different. Yeah. Now, when you're running a large global clinical trial you cannot have different systems for different types of you know, hospitals. It has to be a one single database where you collect all the data. So it gave us a lot of understanding and an insight on how you know, different um, hospitals perform, right? Operate, mm -hmm. what, are, you know, what are the infrastructure challenges, you know, network security and all that stuff and Wi-Fi or the lack of, right? And what are the people challenges, you know? Um, they may be great doctors, but are they also tech savvy you know, or not so, right? So, mm -hmm. so, so come up, uh, so basically, you know, be connected to your actual users. So you'll get a lot of, you know, positive feedback uh, that will eventually go into your, you know, product design and, and stuff like that. We benefited a lot uh, from that. And actually that helped us uh, create some barriers on our product that others have not thought about in, in the past. And it's difficult to redesign at a later date, right? So ours is kind of, you know, organically grew, but because we had a good insights of uh, the different challenges and, and stuff like that, that led us to a lot of, you know, recognitions early on as well, including, you know, Gartner, where we were featured among last three years uh, in a row as the, um, um, in the hype cycle for life sciences and pharma voice and Frost and Sullivan and several others. So uh, kind of um, constantly kept innovating over the years. Last uh, last year, 2021 uh, was a good year and we are definitely looking forward to a great 2022. We'll see how that goes. Yes, I wish you the best for the um, trading ops for this year and then the year to come then. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Avi, for your time. I am sure that our audience will find this interview very insightful and also um, inspirational. Thank you. Thank you for your time and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks, bye.